Welcome to our latest in the Emo 2023 podcast, if I can say that correctly. International number two. I say international because we've got joined by some guests overseas. I will introduce those to in a minute. Myself, first of all, Colin Griffiths from MTD. I do some of the reporting and I get all the guys to Emo 2023. That's a job in itself. Shall I say, is that fair to say, Chloe? Yeah, I suppose so. I'm joined by Chloe Reeve, our technical reporter. Anything else to add on that, Chloe? No, I think you've summed that up. Okay. Happy to be here. A tried and tested engineer. So anybody, Carl, um, Carl and Tony, if you want to ask any technical questions, put Clay on the spot, please do. Our next guest is Carl, and it is an international podcast. Carl, introduce yourself, please, and where are you from? Uh, I'm from Germany, Carl Martin Welker, and I'm an uh, uh, exhibitor as well as entrepreneur, and uh, I'm in the function, I assume, here on the podcast as the... Um, Emo General Commissioner. Absolutely. So the representative for Emo, because t- two things, you're from a company called, now we, I've got to get this right, Shooter? Shooter. Shooter, Correct. sorry. If people haven't heard of that company, a brief overview of the company, please. Uh, we are located in Cologne, making machine tools since uh, almost 150 years and uh, building mainly multi-spindle turning machines and uh, tool grinding machines. 600 people employed. Wow, so pr- impressive stuff and long history. I'm going to have to ask who that gentleman over your shoulder is. That's my great-grandfather. And he started and the company. He founded, he's founded the company in 1880. Wow, and you've got a standout emo as well. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent, yes. so we'll come and visit. So that's, that's your company, but you're part I, of... I have two. Two, two okay, but you're part of VDW, which is organizing the whole of emo. Correct. VDW gets from CCMO, the European Machine Tool uh, Association, the the task every uh, second year uh, or by a certain rhythm to organize the EMO for CCMO. Excellent. Okay. And then last but not least, we're going to go over to Tony, our friend Tony. Now, we did we met Tony in the international well, we met Tony loads of times, obviously, because he works for us. But um, last international <laughs> podcast, he had a different background because uh, Tony, a different day, a different hotel. Different day, different hotel, like always, my friend. You know, we're bouncing around not just the U.S., but the world as a MTD family. And, yeah, my background's not glorious today by any means, but I'm happy to be here and off to another filming in just a few minutes. Excellent. So we'll get we'll get on with the pocket. We're not under any time pressure, but we'll get on so you can get off to your film job because uh, we are one thirty in the U.K., at 2.30 in Germany, I think. And what, what time is it in America? Oh, we're a little after, it's uh, 8.30 a.m., but who doesn't want to start the day on a podcast with the MTD team and meet with Carl, right? Absolutely. Fantastic. Tony, thank you. Carl, thank you very much. So for what we're going to do today is find out, really, just an overview of what, what to expect at Emo and things like that. Now, you might have seen over my shoulder. In fact, I'm going to ask you, Chloe, when is Emo? It's on the 18th <laughs> to the 23rd um, of September. Just to tell you, this is my first Emo. Uh-huh. I have never been to Emo. Obviously, I've been an engineer for 10 years, so I'm really excited. Not very excited for all the steps that I'm going to get in on my stepometer. But yeah, this is when it's going to be, the 18th to the 23rd. And obviously, how many teams have we got going to cover this? We've got five film crews going out to cover cover Emo 2023. So we'll be super busy and hopefully you'll see us out. And if you do, do see us, come and get, get a selfie, take a photo. But it's not about us. It's about what's going to happen at Emo. We know when it is now, 18th to 23rd. But Carl, I'm going to put you on the spot. Where is it? Well, we know when. What can we expect to see in terms of halls, exhibitions, visitors? It's about, uh, it's in Hanover, like it uh, always was for 30, 40 years. Um, and uh, it's sharing the spot, Hanover, Milan, um, switching back and forth. But uh, what will you see? You will see pretty much everything uh, on modern technology, on machine tools, which are hopefully answers to the modern manufacturing and uh, to futures, uh, solving future problems. And that is what the exhibition is for and what made it so, let's say, famous, because it's still the show for modern machine tool um, uh, technology. Okay, now I'm going to put you on the spot. Is it the biggest machine tool show in the world? That's a question how you measure big, but in many, many categories, yes, it is absolutely the biggest in the world. Yeah, that fills us with a bit of a trepidation That's because amazing. there's, I think, tw- 27, is it 16 halls or 27 halls? 
No, it, it, in total it is. We occupy the whole um, uh, fairground, which is a huge fairground, one of the biggest in the world. But um, more, we, we exhibit uh, machine tools actually in, in 15 halls. It's about uh, 42 countries coming, uh, 1,800 exhibitors, and uh, we expect many, many, many uh, people coming from all over the world. It is by far the most international show, um, and uh, you see all alone by the exhibitors, it's about over 70% over coming from abroad. Wow, this is yeah, it's f absolutely phenomenal. It really is, and I have actually been to EMO before, and it's it is an absolutely amazing show. So, really looking forward to seeing, obviously going to the show, but all the new technology. Tony, any thoughts, any comments from yourself? I, I just want to follow up on what Carl's saying and the excitement and, and and the fact that Chloe hasn't been as exciting for me as well. You know, she's mentioned being in engineering for ten years now, and. You know, I've, I've been on the engineering side of things myself for about 15 years and then the sales side for about a decade and now on the media side and I've been to Emo about five times and this will be the first time doing it from the media side. But to back up what Carl's saying, um, I've been to Gymtoff and Simtos and Mtex and the shows all through Latin America and Europe and this is the largest, most exciting show. It is, it is, it really does bring the whole world together, the whole world's technology. It's a meeting ground for people to really get important business and partnerships done. And you'll see things that potentially never, ever seen before and possibly not even fathomed seen before. That's the type of technology that will be there. So, uh, Chloe, yeah, you would definitely get your steps in, but at the same time, there's shuttle buses running between the 16 halls. So you can get a break from time to time. Yeah, that's great. And I think the key areas that we're also going to look at the business is technology, uh, connectivity and sustainability. So, Hold on, that was my next question to Carl. You've just given that away, Carl. I'll beat to it. Go on then, carry on. <laughs> but also, these exhibitions, it's great when you get, to, I mean, yeah, there's machine tools, but you go to a stand and you, and you look at something, you know, having, having been in the industry a long, a long time, and you see see some of these this technology, like, blown away. Absolutely dumbfounded by absolutely amazed by some of the stuff they do, really do. So, Carl... I know Chloe just stolen a bit of your thunder there. Emo specifically is, is concentrating on three key areas for this show. What are they, please? And just do a quick overview, and then we'll, we'll dig a bit deeper into them. Yeah, Chloe mentioned it's it's future business, it's future of connectivity, and it's a future of sustainability. All these subjects which are actually discussed in the media in these days. And uh, we put a focus on the technical solution side. What can the machine tool sector offer to the public, to, to the people uh, as solutions for these main subjects? Okay, so let's, if we just focus on the first one, if, if I said to you the future of business, what would that mean to someone who's, who's visiting the show? What, what would they expect to see? What can they find? I mean, it, it starts with where do I do my business? And, and it, it, we, we, we have uh, a side, the show, or with the show, we have uh, podium discussions and we have um, uh, sessions for people who want to go abroad. Let's say you want to start business in, in future countries uh, for manufacturing, which will be the Philippines, Indonesia, India is right now on the focus. These, these countries, for many of the exhibitors or even visitors, it's, it's, uh, they are not explored the way the US or, the, or Germany is. So giving answers how to enter these markets, how to be successful, either by opening a, a shop or by um, producing or even selling and, and servicing um, machine tools in this area, that's kind of where can I do my future business? And then there's a question, how do I do my future business? And that drives us into the question, what is the demand of the different markets? What, what kind of simplicity, simple or uh, very complex uh, manufacturing tasks do they have and how do they answer that? Let's say if you, if you go to India, your, your machine electronically has to be much more robust than if you deliver a machine to Switzerland, just because you need an electrical buffer. Otherwise, with a CNC machine tool, uh, you run into, into issues if you have to restart it after every 
um, failure or uh, fall down in the electrical system they have. I see. So just really give, giving advice and help in, for different countries. So have you had an experience of, of dealing overseas, Chloe? No. Um, <laughs> sorry, that was the only place I went as a, t as a technical engineer was Ireland. So it's not that close. But obviously... We all work differently around the world, don't we? We see it in this in this field um, and the way people work and dealing with new business. And like Carl said, how do you even start up a new business in a new place? How do you how do you deal business in a new place? And how do you keep that business succeeding for a long period of time to basically grow your business and make your workforce grow? Yeah, and it's it's affected us as well because. Thin, things like carnets now we have to deal with those and they're an absolute pain <laughs> they really are and they're, they're the bane of my life because i have to sort them out for the office but that's that's another story tony what about you your experience of you know i know you travel around the world doing the doing the mtd stuff but any experience of other other countries and trading oh yeah yeah for 10 years we were doing consulting for high-speed manufacturing in the top 40 countries around the world um and again just to add on to to carl's brilliance i mean when you go to places like an indonesia and um, uh, in India, the desire and demand for different technologies and circumstances are are wild sometimes when we think about what's happening in Europe or the U.S. Um, or even like places like Japan and Korea as well. When we think about the top 10 leading countries in manufacturing, and then I want to bounce back to India again real quick, only because they've had the largest jump in the entire world in manufacturing from a placement to a new placement just based on how much more they're bringing in and how quickly they're growing and some of the government stuff that's going into to backing manufacturing over there. So, yeah, I mean, we're talking 30, 40 different countries doing consulting, understanding how business is done in those countries, and then and then creating distributorships there. So it's, it's, it's crazy. It's When we get to Emo, as Carl said, everyone's going to kind of go for a different reason, but it's all going to exist, whether it's additive manufacturing and robotics for a labor shortage or whether we can throw a ton of people at it because it's fairly inexpensive but we got to figure out how to do it with higher quality so what machines do we invest in and i'm not going to get overly long-winded on that but it is very important to understand that the entire world will come to this event because whatever individual company and country success that needs to be done can be done at email Mm. Thank you, Tony. And then just moving on then from, from that, you've got to think about financing of that trade and, and then also things like incentives. I know Germany, for example, has got certain tax incentives. So if you can just give us a bit of an overview on the sort of financing side, Carl. Yeah, very, I mean, very important uh, for both sides, for the customers as well, or for the visitors as well as for the exhibitors uh, uh, of an EMO. And uh, financing becomes in a, in a time where money becomes tighter, where we see inflation in some countries like Turkey, for example, enormous inflation rates. The financing side is very important and you will find um, uh, panels where, where this is addressed and you will find the, 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 the financiers uh, being present and all uh, offering uh, or leasing structures and all that. Uh, yeah, it goes hand in hand. And um, the community finds together at the, at the EMO in Hanover. There's no doubt about it. Absolutely. And it's, yeah, because it's not just a case of buying a machine or selling a machine. You want to make sure you get, A, you're going to get the money and B, how are you going to pay for it? So that's one, that's Correct. the future. That's a quick overview of the future of business. So get to the panels. There's lots of panels and, and advice you can get there in terms of, of that. New markets and got that. Next is, well, someone we spoke to a little while ago said data is, an, is the new oil. And that ties in with one of your other subjects, which is connectivity. So talk to, give me a bit of an overview, Carl, about connectivity and how, how, how that's being addressed at EMO and what it actually means to people. Now, yeah, connectivity is a wild, uh, or wide uh, uh, spread of, of uh, communication streams. It's between the, the, the guy who runs the machine, it's, um, it's feeding systems to 
uh, watch or observe the machine from predictive maintenance uh, to um, machine to machine communication from robot to machine communication all that is is connectivity and you have very specific answers or you can see very specific answers at the emo regarding the different uh, approaches company do and and you you me as an exhibitor i learn as much on the uh, at the emo uh, as my customers do because i can walk around and see what other um, companies not really competitors anybody has to offer in the uh, in, uh, regarding data stream and and uh, regarding internet of things what we call industry 4.0 and and there are new ideas and you pick them up we have uh, installed a panel with um, startups uh, digital startups to which are close to the manufacturing industry so that there is a a good link between the two and that uh, people can search for for solutions which they can use on their machine excellent uh, ultimately making your machine shop a lot more efficient Absolutely. That's the key thing behind it. But it's not only to make the one machine more efficient, it's to make the throughput through your whole company more efficient. Yeah. So, yeah. So when people come to the show, you know, they won't be focused on I'm going there to buy a machine. They're looking at the whole package. So, Chloe, what about your experience on that side of things? So, yeah, it's great. Like connectivity. There's so many levels that you can go to basically streamlining one machine and adding a robot to one machine a man running, connecting all your machines together. So, you know, this machine's running that, that machine's running that, it's stopped, we need to have coolant, we need this, that and the other. Uh, data connectivity and there's so much on offer. Everybody needs something different, doesn't it? And I think at Emo, everybody will find their solution, whether it be this, that, or the other. One very basic thing. Are engineers in machine shops, are they any good at preventative maintenance? Yeah, I suppose so. Oh, they, well, they never do that, do they? Until the machine breaks down. But this, you know, that's just a basic. But, but that's where connectivity can come into play, can't it? Your machine is going to be running low on on coolant. Your tool is about to break. It's got this many runs left. Pre preventing that, not an accident, but keeping you running 24-7 and having no downtime. Downtime means no money, you know. Everybody wants to make money. And I'm going to use connectivity as a, as a segue sort of thing because we're obviously connected to Tony. That's very poor, and I do apologise for that. Tony, your, what's your experience in terms of, you know, all, the, all, all this connectivity and, and the like? Uh, Colin, I a podcast not too long ago, and they, they asked, what do you think the future of manufacturing is? And there's a lot of different answers to that. Don't get me wrong. But my immediate thought was that it is this connectivity it's understanding how a shop works i mean truly works not in theory or part of the practice that we think we know it is truly understanding how it works and one of the great gifts of, of working with mtd is that we get to go behind the scenes and talk to the customers who have found success in this connectivity and i'd like to give a real quick three shout outs to com three companies here in the u.s uh, a pro shop ERP, Datanomics, and Paperless Part. The combination of what these companies have done for the manufacturing shops, time and time and time again, I hear the successes of these shops saying that they've doubled, tripled, quadrupled their output, that they truly understand information that they never had. The main difference between them and their next door neighbor, potentially quote unquote competitor, is that they have machine monitoring and their competitor does know exactly what's happening. Not when it's flashing green when it's running or when it's red when it's not running, but truly understanding the analytics and the data that goes into these machines for the uptime, the downtime, how long tools are running, how to quote jobs appropriately so we're not losing money. The connectivity of this umbrella that sits over top of a machine shop that really helps, and it's not a big brother type of thing, it really truly helps people understand how to do better for themselves, the company that they're in, and the overall company. I am a massive, massive believer in, in this side of where it can take uh, global, or all companies globally, uh, the next step in their manufacturing processes. Absolutely. I think oh. once you take that step as well, it's, it's a huge step, it's a huge investment for people to take that step into connectivity. But once they do it, they wonder why they hadn't done it sooner. 
Absolutely. And Carl, I'm going to push this back to you because you run, you run your own company. And are, are you at the forefront of all, all this connectivity or embracing it? Uh, in some areas, actually, we are. But in others, we are way back and we learn and learn and learn and you're never done. We, by, for example, we missed out collecting data in a very early stage. Data where we had no clue, like big data, where we had no clue, can we use them or can we not use them? We we should have collected them because when you put the right algorithm on it or just uh, artificial intelligence, you might find things you haven't thought about it. What we did was we searched specifically for certain data which we knew we could use and then we stored these, but we, we are right now learning that that was not enough. Right, so that's one of the reasons why you're going to EMA then. Yeah, one of the reasons to see who did it better. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, fair enough. Now, the, the, the third of the, of the areas of, you're focusing on at the show is sustainability. Now, I, you know, this, I think sustain. Oh, I don't think sustainability, but people might think sustainability. Okay, it's about solar panels and, and wind farms and things like that. That's not the case. So, if you can give me a, a bit of an overview on that, please, Carl. Oh, it's huge. I mean, sustainability is everything which has to do with environmental. Actually, uh, if you look at legislation of the European Union, uh, it's also social points. It's uh, it's it's pretty much everything. Certainly, also the climate. Um, but um, what what we can only address or show the. Um, uh, let's say the technical solutions we have for certain areas. And we have a lot. Uh, you mentioned solar panel manufacturing or windmills and all that. Uh, sure, that is done on machine tools, but it, it goes way after. It goes in the, uh, or behind that is machine human communication. It's about um, uh, uh, making it more comfortable less uh, stressing for people to work on machines. How do we uh, um, get better on this field? Uh, up to the point that, uh, yeah, you try to save energy uh, or uh, um, save waste on your machine. Uh, talking about additive manufacturing where you have no spare material or talking about an, an energy optimized machine. There are many, many areas you can address. Absolutely. Now, I'm going to call Tony up on this because you're over in America. And not to be blunt about this, but you're rubbish over there, aren't you, mate? <laughs> that's blunt that is blunt um i'd like to say we could probably do better uh, yeah that's, that's probably a bit fairer than, than my rudeness yes <laughs> it's a conversation it's a conversation that's important we could certainly do better over here i think europeans and scandinavian countries lead the world um I, i've been to kind of far less paying attention to sustainability uh but at the same time um yeah there's there's definitely some sides that are that are pushing for being only here, uh, but we have a long way to go in the U.S. Absolutely. I mean, it's, I think again, all, all these key to success. I'm going to put Chloe on the spot here. What are, what are fines, and not what you get all the time for speeding and parking? <laughs> I can't believe you just outed me like that. What do you mean by fines? <laughs> in the coolant. Oh, so you can get sustainable coolant. Yep. So you can have coolant that prevents, uh, that saves tool life, that actually gives you a better surface finish on your part cleans your part more ergonomically things like this just you wouldn't think you'd find in coolant um like but the fines are the actual particles in in the coolant yeah yeah you're looking at me like you see i, I learned that see Go on, engineering on. no engineering learning all the time and i learned that the other day so yeah. i'll just put you on the spot there and i'll put you on the spot haven't i sorry yeah about. you have ah. um but sustainability <laughs> is a huge huge factor you know a lot of us don't think about it just dump the coolant down the drain and it's like oh my god you can't do that but there's reasoning behind it, you know, running your machine lights out using low energy, using a filter mist system on your machine to get the bad particles out. For, and that's just not for the world. That's for your staff as well, to keep your staff healthy and clean, keeping a clean workshop. And that's just off the top of my head. So the amount of sustainability that we could talk about is unreal. There you go. Thank you for that, guys. So we've, we've covered very briefly your future business, connectivity and sustainability. One for, I know where, where the time is running on. If I said to you, Carl, Umati, what is that? Umati is a language we will use between machine to machine communication. 
It's Umati is a system, uh, a two-way system for communication, for automated communication. I mean, the base is OPCOA, uh, Open Platform Communication Unified Architecture. That's, if you want to say, the alphabet. And the, the language behind it is Umati. And it's right now formed by many countries together, technical groups, which creating the new machine language. So essentially, rather having different languages across different machines and different machine shops, you have all, all one one system essentially. Correct. That, so that if, if that they understand that the code for, let's say, the digital code for an emergency shutdown of the machine is everywhere in the world the same code. That is what Omati is is creating. So we speak the 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 machines in the world speak one language. One language. And Tony, have you come across this at all? You know, I haven't. I mean, I have, but I don't. You know, Colin, I love to talk a lot when I actually know about a topic, but I'm still learning about this topic, and I find it fascinating, um, but never do I speak out of turn uh, when it comes to uh, a topic that I'm still learning about. But yes, I've seen it. I'm learning about it. I have uh, very little insight to give about it. Now, that Tony, that's fair enough, and that's that's probably very good because we're running, sort of running out of time now, so I'm going to do a quick, quick summary, if I may. So, Hannah, well... Emo, Emo 2023, Chloe, when is it? The 18th to the 23rd of oh, September. Now, actually, I do want to clarify, Carl, Hanover, does it have one N or two? Does it have what? One N. So Hanover has two Ns. Yeah, yeah because we've, we've been doing some research. For some places, it's just with one N, just to confuse Correct. you. Correct. Correct. Right, but okay. uh, but uh, the German Hanover has two N. Yeah. Okay. And we only have one Hanover, as far as I know. In America, <laughs> there are many. <laughs> yes, that's fair enough. So I was going to sorry, I've, I've sort of gone off track there. I do, I do apologize. So to summarize, I email twenty twenty three the biggest and fan, most well, most fantastic. That's not the right. Word, the biggest engineering show in the world. Most exciting. Most absolutely. Show 18, in the world. 1,800 exhibitors, tens of thousands of visitors. 18th, 23rd of September in Hanover with two ends. Carl, anything else to add? No, visit our booth. There C you go. Technology. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Oh, actually, I didn't cover because you've got your, your company booth. There's also an emo booth as well. That's correct, isn't it? That's correct. We have and two just booths, to clarify one that, for the go, so, one for the Maltese. Okay, so and, and the, the actual emo guys, Hall 16, stand F11. If you want to find out more about what we've been talking today, anything else from you, Tony? You guys have done an incredible job today. Thank you so much, hosting Chloe. You're incredible. Carl, thank you so much for your insight. I am extremely stoked to be a part of Emo uh, 2023. We're only a little ways away now. We got our flights booked, our hotels booked. Uh, hopefully our camera gear is ready to go, um, and I look forward to seeing everyone there. Absolutely. And Chloe, any final words from yourself? I'm just really excited. Can you tell? No, yeah. I'm just really happy to be going, seeing all the new technology. Like you never, I'm always surprised when I go, but this is going to be times 10. And I'm really looking forward to actually the connectivity and seeing how new data is being tracked. And yeah, really good. Excellent. So everyone's super excited. So it's all about future business, connectivity, sustainability, the biggest engineering well the, yeah the biggest engineering show in the world emo 2023 thank you for joining us guys and i hope you enjoyed the show and we'll see you at emo 23 very soon from the 18th to the 23rd of september mtd will be at emo 2023 in hanover so what are you waiting for get in touch get ready and get excited about emo